So the Gatecaster 8, it's a mixer, you can record yourself, it has effects from Boss, there's multiple ways in, including your phone, Bluetooth and USB, and I've had loads of comments on the first video I did on this. If you want to see that video, I'll put a card up now so you can watch it, but the number one comment that stands out above all is how do you set it up for a live gig? So in this video, I'm going to show you. We're going to use this room, I'm going to set it up for a live gig with my PA system, and I'm going to show you a couple of different configurations. Let's get started, shall we? So welcome to our stage. <laughs> this is where we're gonna be setting up. Now the first thing we've got is we've got a speaker. This is the Mackie Reach speaker. It's like an all-in-one PA speaker, which unfortunately is discontinued at the moment. They make different ones now. And we've got the Gigcaster, and I've actually got it sitting on like a little laptop tripod stand, which you can pick up from lots of different places. I actually got that off Amazon. Now the first thing we need to do is actually plug the Gigcaster into power, as well as the PA, and then connect the two. So let's do that first. First, we're gonna plug in the power. Now it comes with its own plug. The other thing you can do instead is you can power it with USB type C and use batteries if you wanted to use like a power bank. If you're out in a field somewhere, you can do that. But if we're in a gig and we're in a location that's got power, then we do that and plug that in first. Next is our main out to the PA. We've got a left and a right. And these are boss cables and I've also color coded them. If you want to see how I color coded them, I've got a short video about that as well. So for me, red is right, left is blue. And then we're gonna plug that into our PA. The specifics of the speaker doesn't matter as long as you've got two ins, we've got four on this one. So we're gonna plug it in there. So now that's set up, that's not really gonna change depending on what you're gonna be doing. So now the Gigcaster is plugged into the PA. The first option I'm gonna do is a solo artist. So I've got me, I've got a microphone, I've got a guitar, and that's it. This is the simplest and easiest setup. Let me show you. Now the great thing with this setup, it's as simple as it comes. We've got a mic and a mic stand, and I plug that in onto input number two. For the guitar, you've got an option. You can either plug it in onto the back of input number one, or we've got this connection at the front here. So for cabling, it could be easy to go in the back, or it could be easy to go in the front, depending on where you are. It just gives you that option because these are combi jacks, and this is a quarter inch jack. Obviously, if your guitar has an XLR input, you're gonna have to go into the back, but just be aware that the connection on the front is the same as the connection on the back. It is input one, no matter which one you choose. One other thing as well regarding channel one, one. If you have it on Guitar GTR on the settings, it is this front connection here. Whereas if you have it on Channel 1, it is the combi jack. Even though it shows a microphone, it is actually a combi jack connection and you're telling it which one to do. You can't plug in on both at the same time. So it's either got to be one or the other. So I've plugged in at the back here. So I've changed this over to Channel 1 as opposed to GTR which is this. So when I do that, you can actually see it does show a microphone as opposed to an actual guitar. So if we plug this, so if I play the guitar now, you can see that's coming through. Whereas if I change this over to GTR and then go back, it's waiting for a signal from this input not the back. Just be aware of that, obviously, when you are setting up. Now, just to show you this, basically, I put this on the side here, and depends on how you play, and then you can control it and access it really easily. And you access the effects for both vocal and guitar using the pads or using the touch screen. But there is another option, and it's this. This is the Boss GAFC. It's actually what they use for you controlling the Katana amps, but you can also control a gig caster with it as well. So we can actually plug this in, and there's a foot switch connection. So if we plug that in there, we can control the effects on the floor here, so this doesn't have to be actually right next to you. Of course, you might still want it right next to you because of volume control, so you can adjust things, or by pressing record or the mark button after every song. Certainly want it within arm's reach. I've just put it right up here, right next to me, just so you guys can see it. So if I was to plug this in, this goes into the foot switch part, which is here, and then we can put this by our feet. I've actually plugged the guitar in at the back. That way I can actually tape all the cables together, keep it nice and neat. So as you can see right here, we've got the guitar in on input one, we've got the microphone going in on input two, our PA speakers are going out, and we've also got the foot switch. Of course, that is optional. You don't have to have that to get up and running. Now, as you get this out of the box, by default, that's what that is. So we can go input one is guitar, you can see that there, and then input two is microphone, just normal microphone. It's not stereoed or anything like that. And the only other part you need for the input is whether that microphone is 48 volts. This one isn't. So we have independent control for volume one and two here, and then your main PA goes out here, and it's as simple as that. Where we get the pads or the JFC involved is whether you're using the pads for the sound effects for the pads, which is its dedicated volume here, or if we go to effects, 
you can now see these changes over. So originally it was sort of red, yellow, this kind of blue and purple, and then all these different colors. And if we go to effects, you can see blue, orange, green, and purple, and that negates to blue, orange, green, and purple here. So the effects for blue up and down are here. And we can prove that by pressing here, go to effects. And then as I actually press one of these, you'll notice the effects actually change. I'm going up or down, and they're not switched on at the moment. So you need to make sure if you are using the effects that you switch them on here, and then you can just turn the effects on for that channel. And the alternative for this is actually using the paddles. So if I click the very first pedal here, this one will light up. And it's going down a channel, so it's now going down through the channels. If I click this one going up, same with the second one, and same with the fourth one. This last button here, which is effects, actually changes between the actual pads and effects. You don't always have to have that. You could have a nice little sort of applause, and then you could hit that there on channel four, and that will be pad four, and that will play whilst you actually, thank you very much, clap, 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 clap. You could do something like that, and that specific one plays all the way through, so you have to wait for that to end, and that will actually turn off once it ends, if we have a watch of this now. There we go. So that turns itself off. Whereas if I press effects right at the end here, which you can just see there, if I do that now, you can see them change. See that? This makes it just so much easier. If you're playing, you want a little bit of chorus and you've set that up in that way. We can go for it and just actually go to the next one and the next sound. And then we've just gone from brick wall over to vintage vibe right there. And then it's exactly the same process for here. So I've got the PA switched on right now and that's up and running. So even before the PA switched on, you can't hear anything because that master is down. If I turn this up and speak into the microphone, one, two, 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 one, two, one, two, one, two. There it is coming in nice and lovely. About minus 15 dB when I go right to the top. And that's fine because we can click on the second one here and we can go to input and we can see what the volume is. Now, the great thing about this is this is where you can change the gain and you can actually add it in. It's got a nice little bar in the middle here to say where the optimal per place is. So it's a little bit down at the moment, so let's just turn that up. One, two, two, two. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, 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 hello. So I've got five, six dB. That's quite all right, that's no problem. So if we get out of there now, you can see now one, two, hello, hello, hello. One, two, 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 one, two, 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 two. Ba, 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 ba. And then if we turn this up on the PA, one, two, 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 two. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, 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 hello. Two, two, two. Okay, so here we are. This is our setup. We've got the guitar, the microphone, the gig caster, and our speaker. Simple. We've also got the pedal on the floor, should we need to change the effects. I've set the effects up already, so just so you know, I'm coming in on channel two for the microphone, channel one for the guitar, and on the guitar, I've got a thing called a clean combo. <laughs> It's got a nice little bit of a reverb on the end there. And then for the vocal, I've actually got, which is just bright enhance. Now, on the channel of each one, what you've got is you've got the input, as in what's coming in. You've got the EQ for each channel. You've then got the effects, if you've got any effects, and then there's general after that. You've also got, on the master, you've got effects on the master as well. So you can have uh, an effect on the master, which is either a compressor or a reverb. On the main page on the top left-hand corner is actually a tuner. So I don't need to carry a tuner with me. There's one built in. And I've already pressed effects on the GAFC. So this one for the guitar at the moment is clean combo. <laughs> And that's Brit Rock 1978. Now the nice thing is in the software, which you can get on PC or Mac, you can actually say what order these effects are in for your own user. So you could actually go for like a clean and then go into a little bit of distortion for the chorus, maybe on, the, on that song and just go next, 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 which is really good. So a little bit of setup time is actually gonna do the world of good. And let's just say I've finished the song and there we go. And I can actually use the effects to maybe put an applause in if I wanted to, as I said before, and then I can press the mark button and then that's marked. So in between the songs, or I can just hold down the record button and that will stop the recording and that's maybe the end of the set. So this is the simplest setup of all, which is one microphone, one guitar, and the gig caster. 
Okay, so that's the solo musician artist done. Maybe you're two piece, whether you're one singer and one guitarist, or you're a solo artist yourself setting up for a gig and recording at the same time, with effects by the way. So let's change it up a bit and let's go for a duo. Now a duo for two guitars and two microphones is just a duplication of tracks one and two and then three and four. So you've either got two guitars and two microphones and that's it. But what do you do if you actually got two singers, you've got a guitar and you've got a stereo keyboard that you wanna put in? Let me show you that one. Okay, so welcome to the band. <laughs> what we've got is we've got the gig caster here. We've got my microphone coming in on input number two and this guitar is actually plugged in at the bottom here on input number one. I've got an effect on the guitar which is traditional RT. And we've got a little bit of a bright enhance on microphone one, which is on input two. So my microphone is actually on 48 volts phantom power and that's on channel number three. And as you can see, my guitar is actually on channel number four. Now where this gets really interesting is actually the keyboard. And the keyboard is plugged in to the auxiliary input on the bottom here. So we've got one, two, three, four, and then five and six. I know it says mobile phone, but when you go into it and you go into input, you can actually see mob here. And if you just give this a little play. So this is great. We've got a trio with two microphones, two guitars, and a keyboard. Shall we play something? Okay. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, and... So there we go. If you've got comments, then put them underneath this video. And I've left a link where you can go and purchase one of these. Obviously, it's an affiliated link, so if you do buy it, it may help me, but at no cost to you. In the next video, I'm gonna show you a recording. So we've recorded something on the Gigcaster, how we get it out to the computer, and that's the SD card side, and also how we use this with our DAW.